all you great Aries out there. Here is your April forecast. Wow. Awesome. Let's start. Where shall we start? I'm going to start with Mercury. Mercury is going to move into the shadow of the retrograde on the 7th. Some of you are already feeling it. I know it because you've told me that you feel it way ahead of time. And uh, during the shadow, it feels like Mercury's retrograde, although it is not. Uh, it is on the 20th to the 21st. Uh, on the 20th, Mercury is stationary. On the 21st, it's retrograde. And when Mercury's retrograde, everything dealing with communication, correspondence, transportation, our mouth and our minds, it goes crazy. Um, first of all, in the shadow, we will feel that, okay? And um, I get a lot of questions from people when Mercury's in the shadow of the retrograde, um, simply because it feels just like a retrograde Mercury. You can begin projects when it's in the shadow, but it's maybe a little hard to get them off of the ground. You know what I mean? On the 21st, Mercury is retrograde, and it'll stay that way until May. We'll talk about that next month. We have a, a shadow before the retrograde and the shadow after the retrograde. What we do on the retrograde is tie up the loose ends of unfinished business, period, bottom line. Don't start a new job. Don't get a new hairdo. Don't buy a new car. Get the picture. You say, well, what if my car is, you know, in a wreck? Rent one, lease one, okay? And after Mercury goes direct, buy one, okay? So that's Mercury retrograde. Let's start with the sun, the yellow planet. It's in your first house, Aries. You're, and, and with the sun, the center of our life, in your first house, you're saying, I am the center. And um, more so now than any other time during the year, because the sun is in your first house. Awesome. So you're really going to be saying, out of my way, out of my way, my way or the highway. I'm doing what I want, when I want, how I want, because I want. Period, bottom line. And you've got to be in motion. You, you, I mean, you, it's full speed ahead. Well, let me try and see this a little bit better. Ah, wonderful. On the 20th, the sun moves into your second house of money. Do I need to say anything else other than that? This is when you might be saying, is that when my ship comes in? Um, if it's going to come in, it's going to do it right there, right then. This is fabulous. I love it. Now, Mercury, the planet of communication, as we know, correspondence, transportation, starts off in the first house. So you're talking about yourself. You're thinking about yourself. And on the third, it moves into your second house of money. Whatever you think about, whatever you talk about, you're putting your attention on it. And that's the area that grows money, 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 money. I don't have to say anything else. It's great. Now, Venus, the pink planet, love and beauty uh, and money is in your second house. This is its natural placement. And so with the sun creating money and Mercury giving you ideas about it, Venus is and has been creating more income for you through various sources. Okay, I just love it. On the 11th, Venus moves into your third house and you're able to communicate more lovingly with siblings, with neighbors. Um, you're ready for short trips um, and your whole outlook is more loving. Beautiful. Mars, your ruling planet. Uh-huh. The red planet right here. Mars is what you're 
what is number one to you. It's what you fight with and fight for. It's in the fourth house of real estate and family. And so there could be some aggravation with a family member or any type of uh, domestic issue can surface at this point, but your home and family come first to you. It's quite lovely. Jupiter, right here, the greater benefic. It is in your first house. You are optimistic. You are funnier than ever, maybe cockier than ever, and having a super terrific time. When Jupiter moves into your second house, it won't be this month, but when it moves into your second house, there's more money for you. You can't beat it with a stick. All right, let's talk about the lunations. On the 6th, we have a full moon in 16 Libra in your seventh house of partnership and relationship with other people. So get out there and be with others. This is not um, a, a crowd. It may be just one person whose company you choose. So your partners, the ones that you're close to, there can be more communication with them. There can be a new partnership or just um, more of a balance, Libra, between you and somebody very important to you. Okay. Now, on the 20th of the month, we have not just a new moon, but we have a solar eclipse. On the eclipse, um, it's, it's a very powerful time. It's not just a plain full moon, as I said, when things come to a head. This eclipse is right at the cusp or the edge of your second house of money. Can you see how your ability to magnetically create money is activated in this chart. Now we will feel the effects of an eclipse uh, till the next pair come along. We will have an eclipse in May. We'll talk about that in May, of course. And e eclipses are at their peak three to four months after they occur. With the eclipse at the in 29 degrees, 30 minutes of Aries, which is the same thing basically as zero degrees of Taurus. Those of you who are late Aries, early Taurus on the cusp, just get clear on how much, how much money you want to make because it can be as simple as that. And so my dear Aries friends, on that note, May the stars shine brightly on you and yours. See you next month. Bye for now.